Now, my favorite Jordan, I think you can like my favorite pair of like Air Jordans, as in sneakers. And uh, since you asked, matter of fact, it's those ones that are sitting right back there in the corner, those red and black. My favorite Jordan of all time is the Air Jordan 1. That's my favorite silhouette, and my favorite colorway is the red ones. That's, that's my all time favorite sneaker, period, let alone Jordans. So let me, let me just go grab that real quick. Bam. Bread, Air Jordan 1s. Bread, short for black and red, that's the name of the colorway. But uh, yeah, the Bread Jordan 1s, this is my favorite shoe of all time. These, these are just these are just so dope to me. Um, I don't know what it is, man, but they're just so clean. I, I can rock these with damn near everything and it looks good. They're hella dusty right now because they've been sitting over there in the corner for the longest. Because I, like I said, I don't get out much, so I haven't worn them in a minute. But uh, yeah, man. Um, I love these shoes, and some of you might recognize these. Like you might not know anything about Jordans, but uh, some of you, like uh, more well-read uh, manga lovers, might recognize these as the sneakers that actually uh, Hanamichi Sakuragi wears in Slam Dunk. He starts off wearing a pair of uh, infrared white white infrared Air Jordan Sixes, right? That's the shoes that he wears when he first gets a pair from the store. But eventually, those fall apart, and he has to get a new pair of shoes. And these are actually the shoes that he gets uh, in that in that series. So that's, that's really dope as well. So if you've read Slam Dunk, you might recognize these. But if not, if you don't know Slam Dunk, it's a great series. Go check it out. Um, the manga is great. What I've seen in the anime, I also enjoy as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, the main character in Slam Dunk actually wears these shoes eventually in the story, and it's it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, Air Jordan Bread Ones. These are these are my favorites. What's your top three favorite anime? I've never actually sat down and made like a top five or top ten list for my favorite anime. I probably should someday because that'd be a decent video to do. But um. I don't know, I guess off the top of my head, like y'all already know Fully Cool is number one. Yu Yu Hakusho is probably number two. That's definitely my second favorite of all time. And then number three, um, hmm, maybe High School of the Dead, Code Geass, or Food Wars. One and two, all right, I'm thinking about one and two are definitely Fully Cooly and Yu Yu Hakusho. But the third slot, is it really High School of the Dead? I don't know. I'm gonna have to make a top five or a top 10 anime list at some point, but we'll see. Cause I don't wanna, I feel like High School of the Dead shouldn't be up that high on my list, but I'm thinking about it and I, I kinda want it to be. How do you feel about having Wars Universe DLC? If they wanna drop some DLC, I say go for it. All the more support the game gets, the better. I'm kinda in a period right now, I'm kinda like eh on the game, you know, I'm kinda burnt out. But uh, I'm all for more content, the more the merrier. I mean, if they wanna make the game better, by all means, go ahead. I say, why not, right? Boobs or butt, don't cop out on me and say both. Now we get into the real questions anyway. We're getting down to the nitty gritty. Well. Be it as I am a man of culture, it is only right that I side with subscribers. Thank you. What are your top three favorite genres of music? I'm gonna say hip hop in general, or rap, punk rock, J rock. Yeah, I, I guess that's, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with that. Hip hop, punk rock, and J rock. Who is your least favorite character from your favorite manga or anime? Well, my favorite manga is Rurouni Kenshin, and my favorite anime is obviously Fully Cooly. The thing about both of those series though is that they're both full of amazing characters, so I don't really, I don't want to sound like a cop out, but I just genuinely don't have a least favorite character because I, I love them all. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't dislike any of the characters in either of those series. So I, I can't really pick. I'm sorry. I don't know what you want. <laughs> I mean, I do, but I, I can't give it to you. I'm sorry. Did anyone inspire you to do YouTube, or is it something you always wanted to do? Uh, YouTube is something that I've always wanted to do for as long as I've known about YouTube. I remember watching like Ryan Higa and Chun Fujiyoshi like on the Niga Higa channel like way back in the day, like during the really early days of YouTube. And I was like, I want to make videos like that. And I kind of really did because I was a kid and I didn't really know how or anything like that. But as I grew older, um, I've been making YouTube videos for years. Now, I haven't had like a whole bunch of channels, but there's, st there's stuff out there on the internet. It's still out there of me on YouTube that uh, <laughs> you could find from way back when I was younger. I'm not going to tell y'all about it and y'all are never going to find it. But there's stuff out there. I made skating videos, dancing videos, tutorial videos. I, I've had my fair share of content on YouTube prior to this channel, but we're gonna leave that in the past, I <laughs> Where did the name Lotus and the idea of hardcore come from? Well, it's not hardcore, it's nerdcore, but I'm gonna go ahead and let it slide because a lot of people don't know what nerdcore is. Now, the name Lotus, it, it's funny because I have like an origin and a backstory. Hmm. That's another video for another day. I know I've said it a few times, but that, that really is because I do want to explain the name Lotus one day, but that's not something I can do within a timely manner in this video. But as far as the hardcore part, or rather the nerdcore part, um, the nerdcore nerd corner spawns from this corner of my room. Like I call this the nerd corner. Like it's just, it's full of anime, manga, video games and stuff like that. And so it's just, it's just a corner of my room that's like extremely nerdy. And so the nerdcore part comes into play because the type of music that I use in my videos, which if you ever listen in the background, it's nerdcore music, or at least it's, it's you know, if you don't know what nerdcore is, it's like music by nerds for nerds. And like the majority of the music I use in my videos are like anime remixes. And you know, people who watch anime, we're nerds, right? We're all nerdy. You know, we, we listen to, we, we, we listen to soundtracks from like anime and video games and that's a lot of the music that I use in my background is like anime music, anime remixes, and like video game music and video game remixes. So it's, it's nerdcore music and it's like a lot of people make a, a genre of like um, 
rap that's called nerdcore rap where it's like people who rap about you know being an otaku and, and want to go to japan and stuff like that you know and say what you want about it but y'all tell me all the time that y'all like the music in my videos so that's the origin story behind that and that's how i got the name nerdcore nerd corners because i use nerdcore music and this is my nerd corner and this is where i've been making my videos and yeah and i make all my videos in my bedroom so yeah that's that's kind of where the name comes from if you could travel anywhere in the world where would it be there's always the obvious answer, of course. You guys already know the obvious answer. But I'd also really want to go to London. I want to go to Paris. I want to go to Sweden. I want to go to Switzerland. And I want to go to Germany. These are all places that I would really, really love to visit someday, especially London. Like, I don't know what it is about London, but something just about, like, the architecture. I just really want to go and see. And there's all these other, because I've never been outside of the country. I've lived in the U.S. all my life, and I've never, I've never even been to Canada, <laughs> let alone, like, somewhere overseas. And I, I just really want to go someday, so anywhere honestly i would just love to get out of the states to be honest i could really go anywhere and probably i'd probably have fun just because i've never been so do you have your own discord server i know you mentioned being in some servers but i'm curious if you ever thought about making your own or if you have one already i don't actually have my own discord server and i honestly don't really have any intentions on making one because i don't really think i have a reason to um the ones i'm in are just fine for now and i just uh, yeah i don't feel the need to make another server because i don't really have like a reason to i don't know if there's people out there who like want me to make one maybe somewhere down the line in the future maybe i'll make one but no promises on that but as for now like i don't intend to make my own server at any time in the near future are you finally going to upload that's a here y'all you gonna put some respect on my name you gonna have to see me in these hands like real talk you don't have to see me out here in these youtube streets you know what i'm saying dog i don't want to have to fade you on site but i will because lord knows you need a liner because i didn't see you without your hat boy and lord knows you don't want the work bullet boy by the way how, how you light skin with your name onyx you want to riddle me this real quick boy don't even say nothing to me boy because you don't want the work boy do you like nerd and if not do you like vince staples i had a homie well I, he's still a homie but uh, i met him when i was younger and he was like a huge stanford pharrell and he put me on the nerd so yeah i do rock with them heavy as for Vince Staples, I don't dislike Vince Staples, but I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of his music. Like I don't listen to him regularly, and he doesn't really have many songs that I've heard that I'm a big fan of. But uh, yeah, I do mess with N.E.R.D. And now we got somebody who asks, why you got all that hair? Can a bitch love it, doll? And we got another question about my hair that says, how long have you been growing your hair, and what products do you use? Also, is it annoying having to brush the hose off when they try to touch your luscious mane? <laughs> all right, so how long have I been growing my hair? Um, it has been three years i want to say i started growing my hair out like for like the last time i got my hair actually like cut off was in 2014 so yeah it's been somewhere around three years that i've actually been growing my hair out and y'all y'all see how long it is now i mean my hair grows really fast i wash and condition it with shampoo and conditioner like anybody else other than that the only thing extra that i do at all ever is that sometimes i put coconut oil in my hair because coconut oil is great for your scalp and your hair and you know conditions and moisturizes but other than that um yeah, I really don't do anything too special or too extra. But uh, as far as, you know, you know backing up the shorties, um, honestly, the girls do love my hair. And that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. Because I like the way my hair looks, but, you know, the fact that girls love it is definitely a bonus. Um, but one thing that I do not like about it, like, it does get annoying, is, like, everybody always wants to, like, touch it or play in it or, like, reach out and feel it. And I don't like people, like, messing with my hair, you know? And even if it's, like, an attractive girl, like, I don't I don't like it when somebody, like, just reaches out and, like, tries to touch my hair, especially without even asking. Or people who will, like, reach out and, like, can I touch your hair? They're saying as they go to touch your hair, they're like, oh, my God, your hair is so pretty. Can I touch it? I'm like, no, no, you can't. I don't know where your hand's been. I'm fucking around and damage my shit, make my hair start falling out. Nah, I ain't, I ain't with all that. So, um, yeah, it's cool and all. Like, the ladies definitely love it, but sometimes I need to, like, Back, back, mind and lane. You know, it's, it's boundaries. It's a bubble. And I don't need you inside my bubble if I don't know you like that. I don't know if your hands clean. I don't like people touching my hair. Like I'm, I'm kind of like schizophrenic and paranoid about that. Like don't keep, keep your hands out of my hair. I don't like that. <laughs> if you get out of the shower clean, how does your towel get dirty? Why is it said that an alarm clock is going off when really it's turning on? And if a word in the dictionary was misspelled, how would we know? You better Google it. I always wanted to ask this question. Do you beat Rhymes on every fighting game y'all play, or is it usually even? Hell no, nah, it ain't even. I beat Rhymes Ash in anything we play all the time, every time. Nah, in all seriousness, um, I'm not, like, I don't know if people have this idea that I'm better than him in every game that we play, but that's definitely not the case. We're actually pretty even in most of the games that we play. Um, the only game that we probably have a severe advantage over each other is that if we ever play Storm, I would destroy him. If we ever play Street Fighter, he would destroy me. But other than that, like when it comes to the Xenoverse, Tekken, or anything else, like we're pretty, we're pretty on about the same level, I'd say. Which anime character would you party with? Alright, so listen. I already said before earlier on that I don't really like to party, right? But let's just say hypothetically I am going to party. Now, from out of all the anime I've seen, I get to pick one character that I'm going to kick it with, right? So it only makes sense that if I'm gonna party, it's gotta be with a bad bitty, right? You already know what I'm saying, it's gotta be a shorty, right? So it's only right that I'm gonna pick 
psycho booster machine, bro, from high school to next. It's got to be a bad shorty who's going to throw it back for a dollar one time for the one time. All right. No, what I'm saying, no. Have you seen Psycho? Look at her dog. Have you seen her? I swear, this is the baddest girl to have ever come out of any any, any anime ever. That is that is like, I don't really do the whole waifu thing, but that's my motherfucking waifu, dog. Psycho Booster Jima. Who is your favorite member of the squad? Anybody who isn't Rhyme Style. <laughs> have you gotten into JoJo yet? Yes, actually, I've seen all of parts one and two, and I'm like a 10, 11 episodes into part three, Stardust Crusaders. I like it. Have you always been a snack? I feel like I've been pretty A1 since day one, although I definitely hit the upgrade button once or twice once I got to high school, cause um, I was really short. Uh, for the majority of my life like I started out high school my freshman year I was five foot one and I weighed like 80 to 90 pounds I was a very very small dude and you know the girls always thought I was pretty cute but I was just a really small kid but during high school you know I hit puberty I started growing my facial hair or I, I, I just acquired facial hair I started growing my hair out I went from five foot two freshman year to six foot two by the time I graduated and my voice dropped down several octaves so like I definitely, you know, stepped it up a couple of notches. Your boy hit that upgrade button once or twice, one time for the one time, two time for the two time. And uh, <laughs> yeah, man. So have I always been a snack? The answer is yes, but I like to think now nah, your boy's a full blown three course meal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Would you say there was one anime that turned you from a casual watcher to a reader, owner, and borderline analytic? I don't even know if you'd really call me like an anime analytic because I, I usually watch anime on a very surface level and take everything at face value because I usually find everything more entertaining that way when I don't think too hard about it. But um, I wouldn't say there's like any anime that turned me from like a casual fan into a more hardcore fan. I'd say it's just something that like gradually happened over time just because I've always liked anime and just got to a point where like, that's, that's kind of like all I cared to watch eventually. Um, actually, there wasn't one really, there wasn't really one series in particular I'd say that did that. It just kind of happened over time. What are some of the most meaningful songs or lyrics or lines in book, film, etc. that have stood out to you? Yeah, I know Floyd sounds like some weird stupid name, but I'm going with the heavy shit. <laughs> it's funny you say that because Flink does sound like a weird name, but you, you ask a, a deep question. And it's, it's something that I can really think about and sit here and make a whole other video. I've, I've said that a lot today, haven't I? But this is definitely because it, it goes back to music and it's something I can talk a lot about. And the more I sit here and think, the more quotes and lines that I can really give you. But um, one that is like always in the back of my mind, like all the time, something I think about all the time, is the song Chum by Earl Sweatshirt, who's a rapper. And he's got this line in the song where he's like, um, too black for the white kids, too white for the blacks, from on the roll to cracking locks about the bicycle racks. And to me, whenever a rapper or any artist, but usually a rapper, touches on the subject of like being mixed or growing up black around white people and not fitting with the black people and not fitting with the white people, it's something that like hits close to home. It's something that I relate to because I'm mixed, right? I'm half black and I'm half white. And that has given me this experience to where you get the best of both worlds, but you also get like the worst of both worlds, right? Because like you fit in with both, but you don't really fit in with either one. Like I've been accepted by black people and then there's black people that like, and, like you're white, you're not really black like us. And there's white people who are like, you're white or you're black, but you're, you're, you're white, but you're really black. And you know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? It's usually like jokes and stuff, but it's like, it's a real thing. It's not, it hasn't been like this super serious, like deep racial struggle that I've undergone, but it is something I've experienced, right? Where white people don't accept the black side of me or black people don't ex accept the white side of me. So whenever somebody touches on something like that, I relate to it a lot. Earl Sweatshirt touched on that song. Charles Gambino touches on it a lot in his music because even though he's black, he's not mixed, but he grew up around white people and he grew up in white environments and neighborhoods and stuff. It's just like, yeah, I've experienced and I felt like I don't really belong in one certain place. And it's like, you, you at cer certain times you feel like you fit in everywhere and sometimes you feel like you fit in nowhere. And it's just, yeah, it's just something that I do relate to and I do think about. What is the worst anime slash manga you've ever seen? Worst anime, Steins Gate. Worst manga, now this one's really gonna throw y'all off, right? This one's gonna surprise everybody. Worst manga I have ever read is the Fooly Cooly manga. Cereal first or milk first? If you pour your milk before you pour the cereal, you need to be eradicated. Were you popular in high school? Uh, I would say I was actually pretty popular in high school. I mean, a lot of guys thought I was cool because I dressed well and I had, you know, expensive sneakers and because that was my thing. I collected shoes and I like fashion and stuff. And I was found decently attractive by a lot of girls. So, you know, it is what it is. But the thing was, like, a lot of people knew who I was. I was a, I was pretty well recognized. A lot, all the teachers liked me. A lot of the students liked me or whatever. And I didn't really have beef with nobody. And thought I was cool. But, you know, I was pretty antisocial. Like, I didn't talk to very many people. I mostly kept to myself. And even though, you know, I could have been cool with whoever I really chose, to be honest, it's just like, I just usually usually chose to like be alone. Like I would eat lunch alone. I would go sit in the courtyard, listen to music. I would go to sleep in auditorium before class and stuff. And I just, I just kept to myself. And just to give you a, an idea of kind of even more so what that was like, or, you know, an, an example of, you know, that in action. Uh, I was supposed to be homecoming king and prom king, and I didn't go to either one. 
uh, <laughs> matter of fact, if you if you were to find my my high school yearbook, right, you'll still see my name under the photo of the homecoming king and queen because I won, but I didn't go because I don't like school events. I never went to school dances or functions or any of that stuff because it, uh, it wasn't my stilo. It's not really how I got down. Like I didn't. I thought a lot of people I went to school with were just really annoying or just really stupid, so I didn't want to be bothered hanging out with them outside of school and being around them any more than I had to. So yeah, it's funny. I you know. It was supposed to be homecoming king, it was supposed to be prom king, and didn't go to either one. So that kind of gives you an idea of what I mean when I say that I was popular, but I was antisocial. So <laughs> I know it sounds weird, it sounds stupid, and it, it is stupid looking back on it, but it is what it is. That's just how I was. Do you think you'll ever get to a point where you're going to have to get rid of all your anime stuff as you get older? Uh, I would say no, because if I was ever going to outgrow a lot of the stuff, I don't think I'd have it now, because it's something that I liked a lot when I was a kid. And a lot of people that I knew also liked anime and stuff when they were kids. But as I grew older, they already outgrew it. So by the time I was in middle school, you know, all my all my homies who liked Naruto and Dragon Ball, they were like, they were too cool for Naruto and Dragon Ball. You know, that's that's for kids. Anime is for kids. And we, you know, us anime fans, we know that's not true. Anime is not for kids. There's some really R-rated stuff out there that you know should not be seen by the younger audience. And so I think if I was ever going to outgrow anime, outgrow manga, I wouldn't have it now. I'd already have done it. So I don't really see me ever getting rid of all this stuff because I think I'm too old for it or anything like that. Because if that was the case, I'd probably have done it already. Have you seen Gurren Lagann and did you like it? I've seen it, thought it was okay, didn't love it, didn't hate it. Shonen or Seinen and congrats on 5k. Well thank you. And between the two, I mean, I haven't really read that many Seinen. I like what I've read, but obviously I own and have read way more Shonen. So I'm going to say Shonen, not necessarily because I like it more, but just because that's just what I have more experience with. But I like all the things that I have read, which isn't very many, so. What are a few out-of-print series that you'd love to add to your collection that you probably never will? Off the top of my head, there's really only two series that are currently out-of-print that I have any interest in. The first one being the eight volumes of the Lelouch of the Rebellion Code manga that was published by Bandai. And the other one is No Longer Human. Where are you from and what designer clothing do you wear or like? Uh, I'm from Pennsylvania, but I live in North Carolina now. As for what designer brands I wear or like, uh, I don't really own much or really any expensive like designer brand clothing except for like my APC jeans because I love my petite new standards. But um, some brands that I do really like, I guess like the main three like luxury brands that I like a lot, but I obviously don't wear just because they're too expensive and I, I just can't afford to spend that much money on clothing, would be uh, Saint Laurent, Fear of God, and Balmain. Those are like my three favorite like designer brands that I love a lot. Um, I mean, there's, there's a ton of other stuff out there. I, I love clothing, I love fashion. Those are like my three favorite brands that if I had money like that, that I'd probably buy a lot of stuff from. Why did you start reading manga and what video game can you go back to and just have fun with? I started reading manga when I found out that the Naruto manga existed. Like when I found out that Naruto was a book and that it could be read, I started reading it. And once I got my hands on everything I could read in person, I started reading it online. And then it just got to the point where I didn't even want to watch the anime anymore because I was so far ahead in the manga and then like the anime was so far behind. And I wanted to do stuff. I wanted to catch up to what was going on in Japan. So that's kind of why I started with manga. It all started with Naruto. As for what video game can I go back to and just have fun with? Uh, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, any of the, the first and second gen Pokemon games, uh, Digimon World 3, Tekken 3, uh, just, just any old school games I played when I was younger, I usually, because I, I always go on a nostalgia trip and every once in a while I'll go back and play some of the older games and just have some fun with them, and I'm just, I'm never bored with them, I never get tired of them. I go back and play through them all the time and it's still a great time to me, so, yeah. Next question is, do you smoke weed? Answer to that is really short, sweet, and simple. No, I don't. Would you keep dating a girl if you found out that she hates Fully Cooley and her favorite anime is Steins Gate? Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, there's way more to a relationship than just, you know, us having similar tastes in anime. Matter of fact, I, a girl that I date doesn't have to like anime at all because that's just like, that's just what I like. We don't, like, we have to have things in common, obviously, but she doesn't have to like anime for me to date her. I mean, I've dated girls before who don't watch anime or don't read manga, and it's really not that big a deal. If she thinks Fully Cooled is garbage, but she thinks Steins Gate the, the greatest thing that ever exists, I'm gonna tell her she's wrong. <laughs> and we're gonna joke about it, we're gonna crack jokes, and we're gonna argue about it, but it's, it's all gonna be in fun and good nature. I mean, I really, I really wouldn't care because it's not that deep, it's just anime. Do you have any favorite TV shows outside of anime? And the answer is no, because I really don't watch anything other than anime, to be honest. Alright, so now we got some questions from my homie Coco Joe, and he asked, How did you first come across Fully Cooly? What got you interested in photography? Which I kind of already answered. Uh, any manga releases in the near future that you're partially excited about? And can you offer any fashion advice? Well, photography, I kind of already answered that one, so we'll just shut that one off to the side a little bit. And then, uh, are there any manga releases that in the near future that I'm excited about? Um, off the top of my head, no. I don't know of anything that's not out already that I'm looking forward to, so I don't really have an answer for that one. But when it comes to Fully Cooly and fashion, let's talk. So, Fully Cooly. The way I discovered that was simply just by watching TV. It just came on Adult Swim one night. Now, when it comes to fashion, you know, I'm, I'm no authority on it, right? I'm not the fashion police, although I do have people tell me that I dress well, they like the way I dress, they like the clothes that I wear. 
but I don't spend you know a ton of money on my clothing. So what I will say is that don't be afraid to shop at like department stores and just buy generic cheap things, right? Like this is a shirt from H and M. Now, Coco Joe, you live overseas, right? So I don't know if you guys even have an H and M overseas. But uh, it's like, this is just like a, a $10 shirt, right? But it looks good. It's just a plain t-shirt from Target. But this is like, it's, it's a dope outfit, right? Like, I mean, it's, it's a pretty dope look. And that's the thing with a lot of my clothes is that they come from cheap places like Target, Walmart, whatever. It's more about how you put it together and how it fits more so than, you know, where you got it from or what brand it is. Because, you know, I've worn expensive brands and I still got some expensive brands, but you don't have to spend a lot of money to dress well. Build your wardrobe around simple, classic, interchangeable pieces that will never really go out of style. So like a lot of solid colored t-shirts, you know, nice button ups, jackets and outerwear that, you know, you can wear in the winter that, you know, will always be in style, you know, like shirling coats or like a, you know, um, a bomber jackets, like aviator jackets, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I guess I could throw some examples on screen or whatever, because, you know, people tell me they like the way I dress. So I can use examples of like how I do dress. Me personally, I'm very, very fond of denim jackets. You know, a good jean jacket never goes out of style. And I've got several different colors and, and styles that I really enjoy. That's, that's my main thing is, is plain white t-shirts and a denim jacket. And you guys will notice that I wear that my, my regular blue denim jacket and a white t-shirt 99% of the time. Because uh, I got I got a lot of denim jackets and I got a lot of white t-shirts and you can never go wrong with that. And you know, me personally, I love bandanas, but that's just me, you know, you accessorize your own way. But yeah, if I really want to give you some fashion advice, it's that to don't overdo it. Don't think that you have to spend a lot of money to dress well and buy simple interchangeable pieces. So like, you know, not a lot of like extravagant colors, you know, just simple blues, whites, blacks, grays, stuff that goes with together with anything, right? Something that you can wear with any pair of shoes, any pair of jeans, whatever. And uh, yeah, just buy stuff that never goes out of style. Simple t-shirts, simple button-ups, you know, nice jackets, and you're good to go. Cause that's how I dress and I get compliments all the time. Next question what that mouth do though and all i can say to that is that's my line i should be the one asking you that you don't get to ask me that but how about you slide in my dms that we'll talk <laughs> next question is who is your favorite manga superhero and why mine is probably saitama i know mainstream lol honestly i haven't read too many manga series that have quote unquote superheroes in them so what i'm just going to do is just fall back on my hero academia because that's easy and my favorite character in my hero academia has got to be todoroki right that's the coolest dude in the series to me Bakugo is dope. I like Bakugo a lot. I know. I think he might even be more popular than Todoroki. But me, I'm a head ass. I always gotta go with that edgy, cool, angsty teenage character. So that's I gotta start with Todoroki. Not to mention, I think he has the coolest quirk so far that I've seen. He's super broken and overpowered with the the half cold, half hot, and then with the, the two tone hair and the different colored eyes. Like his his design is just sick to me. Everything about him is just really cool. So he's my favorite character in the series. What is your favorite Dragon Ball game of all time? It's gotta be Xenoverse 2. It's it's the game that I love to hate more than anything else. Um, it's a far from perfect game, but I've had so much fun with it. I've met so many people because of it. I, I've helped grow the channel because of it. Uh, I just had a great time with the game, man. And even though it's not perfect, it's got these flaws and there's some things that really need to be fixed. I put more time into it than any other Dragon Ball game and I've had more fun with it than any other Dragon Ball game. So it's only right that it's my favorite. When are you gonna post more shit on Instagram, dog? Don't hold your breath. Cause honestly, in case you haven't noticed, I've kind of been letting my Instagram die. I don't really use Instagram like I used to. Like I don't think I've posted anything in months and I'll go several months without posting nowadays. And it's not because I've stopped taking pictures that I've lost my love for photography, because that's definitely not the case. I just, I don't know, I just kind of lost interest in keeping up with Instagram day to day. Is this question actually useful? Another one of those, but again, I can't do the voice. But their question is, what was your motivation to continue YouTube? Because I lose my inspiration every other week. And my motivation is just the fact that it's fun, you know? It's not even something that like, I need to be inspired and motivated to do. I want to do it just because I have fun doing it. Do you draw manga? And if so, what type do you draw? And the answer to that is just no. I don't draw very well. I definitely can't draw my own manga. Next question is from someone named Darius and asked, did you beat Power Intuition? And I know that we've been putting in work at Persona 5 and the answer is yes, I did beat Power Intuition. <laughs> Winding down, we finally made it to the very last question on the list. And this one comes in from the homie Jay Dentastic, and he asks, yes, I have a question. When is the response video going up? Because it's been 16 days and we've all been wondering. Okay, thanks, bye. And to that, all I can say is that you and your brother can both kindly suck my dick. That's pretty much gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me today for this q and I know this video went on for way, way, way too long. I highly doubt the majority of you sat through the entirety of this video. But if you did, then props and virtual cookies to you. You really are a trooper. I can't thank you enough for all the support. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all again so much for all the continued support, all the love, all the growth, all the likes, shares, comments, everything. All, everything that y'all do just brings a big smile to my face. It's making me so happy. This helps me have more and more fun doing this whole YouTube thing. But uh, yeah, I don't want to drag out the ending too much. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay tuned for all the awesome content I'm bringing you. And with all that being said, this is all I have today. And remember, nothing can happen to you from the bad. Later.